there we go. Got it. And then, come on. Hurry up. Okay, that's done. Put that onto the lowest quality it goes so it doesn't use up all the bandwidth. And then I get to do the tweets. Uh -huh. fun. The only one thing that I've just like stopped is that I've like actively marked as hidden on my on like my social media. For, you know, I try not to scroll through social media anymore. Mm. But on on YouTube, I actively like click and hide where I can. Anything to do with just COVID at the moment. Oh, I, I, it's I, just I, I stopped so... caring. Not stopped caring. I just stopped, um, well, it, it, it's, it's stopped. engaging. Yeah, yeah. That's one. But but it's like it's like it's, you know I. I, I it's just like all, all the um, the mandates or the sort of like vaccinated versus unvaccinated rules that are coming out in the EU or EU countries at the moment. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit. Oh, it's going. My internet connection's unstable. What's my housemate doing? <laughs> Started playing video games. It's entirely possible that. I keep looking at cars as well. I'm just like, oh, I want that. I mean, you just got recently got a new car. Yeah, but I want another. <laughs> Also, I'm not spending any money, so that's that. But I'm moving house on Friday anyway, so. Hmm? I'm moving house on Friday anyway, so. Oh, okay. That's going to sap up a lot of money. I keep looking at new cars, but the problem is I keep looking at things like Alpha 159s. And um, believe it or not, they're notoriously... Uh... Unreliable. Yeah, but they yeah. do look. It is the prettiest, oh, the, 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 cars. Yeah, oh, they look amazing. It's like I keep looking at BMW E92 M3s because they've oh, got yeah. that. They've got oh. that amazing V8 in them. Yeah, I think I know the one. You, oh, yeah, that was the only one that had a V8 in for a, like it's like 2006 or something. 2008 to 2013. Yeah, that one. And I'm, I'm probably going to buy one. Just <laughs> not yet. Do you have a Twitter account? Me? Yeah. No, I'd rather stick pins in my nipples and go on Twitter. Fair enough. That, that says a lot about Twitter. And apologies to our live audience, but yeah, I, I detest Twitter with a, with a passion. I, mean, I don't think the world really wants to know if I've woken up and gone to the loo. I don't, you know, nobody wants to know that, and I don't really see the point in it. Um, I, I mean, you know, everything from we have a Twitter account, but I, I'm, it's not something that I use yeah it's not what's annoying them is though is that it's sometimes the best for, source of information for a lot of stuff and you're like oh can we not can we uh yeah. can, we, can we do better i feel like we can I need the F on there for everything F1 Facebook page. That's uh Do you have one? Well Facebook page. Yeah, for the uh, for Tom, uh, for the F everything F1. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it's in here. I'm just by I don't know which one it is actually. It's I'll send it to you now. Ah, cheers. 
I just want to make sure it's the right one. If you are on the live stream, welcome to the unprofessionalism part. <laughs> you get ex you get exclusive behind the scenes content. Oh yeah, we call it content. <laughs> Anything's content if you make it content. Uh, where am I doing? Is it at the top or is it the bottom of Slack? Ah. Ah, that is the right one. Okay. Should be in your DMs. <laughs> There's a joke to be made there somewhere, I'm sure. I know. That's why I phrased it like that. And I thought I'd just, <laughs> I'd just leave it just there. Just a little sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Facebook, for taking a million years to do the one thing you designed for. Um, right. Let me close that. I'm so good at this, can you tell? <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it, to be fair. Yeah, it's um, it's annoying you can't automate it a lot of the time as well, um, which is my gripe. You know, I'd, I'd prefer to be able to set this up beforehand. Okay. Oh. There we go. Everything all sorted. <laughs> oh. um, what am I looking for? Yeah, that. Can I just check it's all done? Yeah, there we go. All good. All sorted. Right, so if you're ready to start, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, make sure I record to the right place. To the cloud. Twenty-one races, and it all comes down to this. Despite every action, both on and on track and off, we find ourselves with the closest of title deciders, matched only by the 1974 F1 World Championship, in which both uh, in which both Fittipaldi and Regazzoni also went into the last race uh, of the season at a points deadlock. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. Hosting today will be me, Owen Medford, and joining me are Tom Downey from the Everything F1 po podcast. Hello. 
Um, today, we'll be pre- uh, previewing the upcoming season finale uh, for, uh, at the uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Um, but first, I'd just like to sort of notify you of uh, a couple of competitions that we're running. Uh, oh, where are they? Oh, it doesn't believe it. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I thought we had some, but uh, apparently not. Uh, that wasn't in the script, was it? Um, <laughs> gosh, I'm worse at doing this than, uh, than Michael Massey is at uh, race directing. Um, so uh, we are now streaming the live sh- uh, the show live on YouTube. So be sure to like our Facebook page, follow our Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Formula One Grid Talk, uh, with the bell icon so that you're notified of future shows. Um, Right. Uh, I'm not going to even talk about what happened uh, with less than 24 hours ago. Um, that is that is not that is not what this is about. Uh, that has happened. It's been put to bed, and uh, and now we are within the midst of uh, as as I said in the in the uh, in the build up there, the closest title defi- uh, closest title decider going in uh, since 1974. Um, it's kind of. It's kind of fitting, almost, isn't it, Tom? Um, for the, the the roller coaster of a season we've had. Oh God, yeah. Um, if you'd have told me after, say, the second round of Austria, when Mercedes was saying Red Bull have got that two tenths, Red Bull have got that two tenths, and after the round of the Netherlands race, and then when we went to the USA and Max held on for the win. And Russia, uh, yes, yeah, so Russia where he came P2, Mexico where he took the win. If you'd have told me, and then obviously with Hamilton's disqualification in the um in the in the initial qualifying in Brazil, if you'd have told me that after all that, we would have had the results we've had and the races we've had to go into the final race tied on points. I mean, it is absolutely fitting of the of the F1 season, of this F1 season. It has been so nip and tuck, and there have been twists and turns and just curveballs thrown in, and it almost wouldn't be right if we didn't go into the final race with it basically being winner takes all. Yeah, I think that's exactly, you've said it best there, it's it's winner takes all. Um Right, it's, th- it's 369 and a half points uh, owing to that, uh, that race. Well, race uh in belgium that event yeah 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 that contractual obligation uh, contractual obligation yeah. um really i mean i'm going to start with i'll start with mercedes um given that they are something like oh goodness uh, i can't do the maths uh there's something like 28 points 20, ahead in the constructors at the moment yeah 28 i believe yeah I think you might have said that. It just dropped out the connection there. Um, uh, 28 points in the constructors between them. Um, That's obviously surmountable uh, by Red Bull um, in in the last race. Uh, But, you know, you kind of feel like that's not where the the battle is and that that almost Mercedes would be happy to lose it, wouldn't you? Uh, Yeah, um, I I think... Mercedes have definitely got the upper hand in the constructors because they have that 28-point lead. So th- th- they would need Red Bull to win and Paris get a chunk of points ahead of Bottas, which, you know, if, if Bottas has a bad qualifying or a bad start or, you know, he'll he'll get stuck in the line of traffic and he won't work his way through, which is, you know, just hashtag just Bottas thinks. But, um, uh, yeah, in terms of the constructors... I honestly, or certainly part of me thinks that both teams are so like determined to get their driver to win the championship. Because whichever way you look at it, it's going to be history. Max will be the first Dutch champion, or Hamilton will be an eight-time world champion. Whichever way you look at it, it's going to be history. And it's the final, it's, it's the final race of these regulations before we have the new 2022 cars, which are significantly different. So it's I, 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 I don't know. Um, I don't. I just don't know which way it's going to go. Um, and I, I think the constructors' battle is almost going to take a back seat, and the second drivers, so your Perez and your Bottas, they'll be there to support 
Hamilton and Verstappen in, in, in their title quest. And dare I say it, Red Bull will pull in Alpha Tauri if needs be on this. And tot- and you know, Mercedes might try and dangle something with the Astons or the Williams or something behind them as well, just to do I, I I'm not insinuating anything, but I'm saying the teams in some kind of this will pull any trick they can. They will use all their available resources and flex all their power they can to get the result they want. I don't think you're uh, I don't think you're out of line in saying that, to be honest. Um yeah, if I, I were you know, if I were a Formula One, that, with, with, right? Okay, honestly, with the with the, I don't, I don't think it's that even that they're Formula One teams anymore. Uh, the, you know, almost mudslinging that has yeah. been going on, that you know, the tensions that have risen, not just between the two drivers, but between you, you, you almost feel it, like even, even down the, through the depths of like every every single level of the management structure. That honestly, it must it must be yeah. pretty it must be pretty awful driving to, uh, down the M1 at times because you've got Milton Keynes on one side and you've got Bra- uh, sorry not the M1 it's more like the A5 you've got Milton Keynes on one side and you've got Brackley on the other and that, you must yeah, be able you've to, got the two teams that's going at each other like that yeah you, you must be able, you must be able to feel like the the, the the feel the anticipation yeah it's, well well put it this way we'll betide anyone who buys a can of Red Bull in Brackley. And woe beside anyone who buys a kind of monster in Milton Keynes, because you'll be seen as the antichrist for, for, for either team, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, uh... it's just, but but it's what you said about the detention, you can feel it. Did you see Hamilton after? I don't want to talk too much about Saudi. I really try not to. Because this is a preview show, Tom. <laughs> but Hamilton was like ruined after the race, and it just goes to show the toll that this is taking on, on the drivers. I mean, yes, you know, New Circuit is a hot country or the rest of it. And it's a, it was a physical, it was a physically demanding circuit. But to know that they've got to do it all over again in six days' time, and there's even more pressure on it today. Uh, sorry, there's even more pressure on it in, in, in six days' time. It's just... You know, I I, I I I bet they're probably sitting on opposite sides of Abu Dhabi or something, because because Christian Horner and Total Wolf, and then Ron Meadows and Jonathan Whiteley, they're probably not safe to be within hundred feet of each other at the minute. Yeah, you do get that feeling with the the way things have played out um, thus far. Um, unfortunately, I, I I I I'm not good enough to do the maths. Um, but it's interesting that you talk about the uh, the the. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm not good enough to do the maths. Um, but but it's interesting you talk about the track uh, of Saudi Arabia. Um, I'd like oh, to move on right. to. I'll, I'll just start moving on to the uh, perm, like sort of the uh, the track changes uh, that have been made yes. um, to Abu Dhabi to try and improve the racing. Um, we've got a completely reprofiled uh, first sector. So uh, gone is the sort of clunky chicane uh, just before the hairpin, which ruined opportunities. We've now got a uh, a wider radius hairpin uh, with more runoff behind it. Uh, and we've got a long sweeping set of co- couple of corners going into that. Um, come the end of the uh, second back straight, we've got, uh, rather than, again, another clunky chicane, we've got a big sweeping cambered corner. Uh, and and also uh, the section going under the Yas Vaisuru Hotel is completely reprofiled to, uh, to try and aid uh, flow and overtaking. Um it's been a sort of a knife edge between the two cars this season. Uh, which do you think uh, is going to come out on top? Just given everything that we know so far, with you know Mercedes squatting suspension, and and to be honest, I think I think Red Bull probably have the the, the edge on uh, on downforce. Who who do I think is going? to... I don't is know. Is it a case the... of flip a coin? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to depend what sector we're going through. Because Mercedes are probably going to have the straight line speed, but the the, the twisty bits are going to favour Red Bull, you'd say. But it's a question of is there enough straight line speed to, for, for Mercedes to make up that difference in you know sort of down that back straight and all the rest of it? And oh god, I I don't know. I just do not know, and I just can't wait. <laughs> I, I I'm sorry, I've barely even answered the question. But uh, I, 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 the teams are so close, and both the cars and the drivers. Sorry, my phone, my watch went absolutely nuts. 
Um, it's, it's like there's so little between the teams. And, and they both work in their sort of like certain areas. Just like Red Bull, we know of what's been good around street circuits. And Yas Marina has elements of a street circuit in the final sector. But then Merck have got that massive shunt in, in the back of the car, which can just absolutely yeet them down the back straight. And oh, I don't know, it's, oh, it's going to be lush. It's going to be amazing. You, you couldn't, it's almost like, hopefully, hopefully they don't stifle the racing, the, the, the changes that have been made. Hopefully they, hopefully they actually geared up to be the, the hope, the thing we've been expecting. But I, I think as you've said, like, yeah, the, the way you've put it is best is that we just, we just don't know. They're so close and that, and it's, it seems almost purpose built to be a, uh, a track that almost favors neither, um, between the two. Um, you know, I, 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 I think honestly, if we were to try and say who's going to come out on top between the two, we'd be lying. I'd be picking names. Um, so I'm going to move on to an easier question, uh, which is, um, we're just going to move down to Ferrari. Uh, I mean, bearing in mind, uh, looking at the points, I don't, I, oh yeah, no. Um, I think Ferrari are half a point away from uh, just half a point above uh, not having to care, basically, um, about McLaren. Um, this has got to be seen as a win for the for the, for the the Scuderia, given where they were half three through the season. Yeah, I mean, especially when, when McLaren got a one-two. Can I just point out McLaren? Still the only team with a one-two this season. Go on, my boys. Um, yeah, it's, Ferrari have really sort of They've, they've 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 really turned it around um and i think i know i've certainly underestimated how much they've been creeping up on mclaren just taking points out taking points out and i said this yesterday and i'm going to repeat it today and any australian listeners any australian listeners or any danny rick fans you might want to cover your years for this one because it's about to go um if danny rick had been in q3 i might get into the points more times I would argue McLaren would be certainly a lot closer to getting on top of P3. And it would certainly be a hell of a lot closer. Yes, they have had some bad luck, um, but every team has had bad luck on on the grid this year. Um, And Ferrari have just, given where they were last year, they've, um, they've really turned it around this year. And I will be, I, I will be frank. I've said on this podcast, oh, I don't think Ferrari are going to do very well. And then they've done like P7PA and I'm like, well, they're going to be sideways. And then, and then it's like, probably not the best thing to say, sorry. Um, and then, and then also, um, and then also it's like, um, oh God, um, I, Danny Rick, you know, obviously he did have, he did have a good win and he had some good races after the, um, after the summer break and he has scored more points. And Lando has fallen off. I think ever since Lando had that really scary high speed shunt in um, uh, Spa in the wet, I think he's just backed off a tenth or two. And I don't blame him because he's a young lad. You know, he's a hell of a lot younger than I am. And um, and to have a big accident like that, bearing in mind we know the history of that corner of recent years. It's just, yeah, you know, for Ferrari have made their own luck here. They've worked their way up the grid, and and they've just, it's, yeah, you know, they've um, they've now got a firm grip on P three, I'd say, in the constructors, and unless they have a double DNF and McLaren get like P four and five, I don't I think. Don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to talk across you there, Tom, but uh, I don't think it can be overturned. I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's, 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 I believe it's 38 and a half, uh, yeah, 38 and a half points. Yeah, so um, McLaren would realistically have to get, what, a 2-3 or a 1-3? Oh, I think it's a 1-2. Uh, oh, they would, 25, 65. Yeah, they would. They'd, they'd have to get it. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, wait, maybe? Uh, oh, oh, see, oh. No, no, possibly a 1-3 with the fastest lap. Yeah, 1-3 one, three with the fastest lap would do it, but... <sighs> It's not going to happen. There's a, there's a championship battle going on in front, if we haven't mentioned. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of the, it's not even an elephant in the room. It's a it's it's a bull in a china shop. It's it, it, it's creeping into every single thing we're going to talk about because that's all there is. That's it. Can I just point out that was a great play on words? A bull in a china shop. Hey, I did hey. it. Got him. German china shop. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the the real. I think the, the you know we talked about the the. You know, when it comes to Ferrari and McLaren, we talked about the drivers. Um, Norris was Norris, remember, was third not too long ago. He's now sixth in the in the drivers' championship. Uh, and as you say, he's fallen off. And and I fully understand. Like, I fully get what you're saying. I fu- I think you probably there's a lot of truth in it. Um, these guys live on extreme confidence, uh, and it's and it's got to be you know whether it's the car not sticking or the or the car not stopping. You know that you're going to check yourself when you go any into any other corner that's like that, and you know whether it particularly uh, if it's somewhere where the walls are close or anything like that. Um, do, do you think science can do it? Do you think he can get five on five points on Norris in the in this last race? <sighs> God, it's it's this season. I, I I don't know. I don't know, and I don't want to say. Um... You'd have to say momentum is with McLaren, uh, sorry, Ferrari at the moment. Um, and Sainz is on, I think he's on the longest scoring streak of um, of, of, of anyone at the moment, isn't he? I believe you're right. I think they flagged that up in, during yeah, the race. Yeah, so I'm sure they mentioned it. So, you know, he's Mr. Consistent. He is also the driver who scored the most amount of points without getting a win <laughs> at times. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I I I I would back signs over over Norris at the moment to finish ahead in the constructors. Mm, yeah, didn't yeah. didn't didn't think I'd be saying that in May. <laughs> didn't think you'd be saying it in August. What's, what's, mm, well, and then come September. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it all fell apart. Um, yeah, after that we've got. Uh, we've, I mean, it's it's unfortunate. It's, we've got an unfortunate job now because it basically becomes inconsequential. <laughs> a bit going down. Uh, you've got Alpine Renault. They are looking. Uh, I believe yes. Uh, before uh, the last race, they were behind AlphaTauri. I think. Uh, were they? I wouldn't like to say either way. Actually, I don't remember. There was a point where they were level on. No, they must have gone ahead because Al because AlphaTauri had a double DNF. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. Um, so Alpine Renault, they can't go forwards. Uh, it isn't, you know, it's they were they were 120 points off uh, off the next. Uh, they were 120 points off off McLaren in in fourth place, so they can't go that. Um, but bear in mind, the Alpine hasn't been the best of things uh, no. all season. Um, they've done an excellent job, really. Uh, and and it's almost like the, the the last thing they need to do is just you know round off. Um, round off their season with a decent result at, you know, a track that actually hasn't been that too bad for them in some ways. Yeah, um, I mean, I, th- I, I think, I think the most, uh, the most vivid Renault memory I have of, um, oh God, uh, where are we going, Abu Dhabi. Um, I think the most vivid memory I have was Nico Hulkenberg in twenty eighteen saying, "I'm hanging upside down like a cow." Um, that that was that was that was a bit scary that one actually, um, but yeah, um, Alpine have been an odd one this year because they were fairly decent last year. You know they showed some real signs of progress and they got fairly consistent. But this year it's been a. Oh, I have to mute this. Oh, I swear to God, man. Um, sorry, uh, it's um, yeah. Uh, they, they've been they've had some real highs this year. Ocon, obviously. Um, Alonso getting back on the podium. Um, Alonso did really well in Baku, for example. Um, you know, you know, you know, just just nice, nice to see him sort of back in his stride in F1. Um, Let's not forget the uh, the the almost almost like by less than a second, uh, less yeah. than half a second uh, loss of a podium. Not, for, not for, for Ocon, yeah. Well, it, it was it was reminiscent of Baku 2017 when Stroll was actually caning it to the line. And, and, and Bottas was, you know, he, he was, it was like that meme where someone's just looking behind you, and they go like that, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, 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 yeah, uh, Alpine have been a bit like Aston; they've been consistently inconsistent this year. 
they've been less sort of like volatile or up and down th- th- than, than Aston. Um, they've been more consistent in the terms they've always been between about P7 and P14, I'd say. They've been right in that sort of midfield sort of like humding that's going on. This weekend, oh, God. Um, they could draw, I, you know, I, again, I don't know what to say. Um, they could they could do all right. Um, but I said that coming into Jed after they had a really good weekend in Qatar and they were pish in qualifying. Um, you know, Ocon, like Hungary, got lucky with the jump. But you you play the hand that is dealt to you. And he looked, him, well, to say he looked himself into that position is harsh. But he, he just he drove well to go, excuse me, to get where he was. And, and yeah, I don't know. As, as for as for Yas Marina, I don't think we'll see that much from Renault. But I, you know, I've been I've been whenever I say that about a team this season, it goes the other way. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm waffling. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's been actually the, the story of the season is that you can't you can't predict it. You can't. Um, calculate it you know that even the teams have been caught out and yeah. uh and we've been sitting here and and so you know all season we've been saying it'll probably go this way and it doesn't or you know that we think this is this is gonna get this is a bit getting a bit away from them and they turn it completely around and i think that says you know i i would predict based on some of the characteristics of the runner uh, of the alpine that it's you know it's fairly quick in a straight line um it it might actually have a chance but I've been so wrong before, as we all have, and uh, and it's you know it's going to be fascinating to watch. The odds are that they won't get overtaken in the championship by uh, uh, by AlphaTauri, but you just never know. Um, you know, AlphaTauri could have a really good, good really good race. Uh, you know, they have had a double DNF, unfortunately, and uh, but it you know it, it kind of seemed that in Saudi Arabia that Sonoda of AlphaTauri was getting back on terms and actually starting to bring it back up to the level that they need him to be you know back in the back in the same car as uh, as as Pierre Gasly who's been obviously um you know rinsing them for points as uh, well helping them to to a, a massive haul of points um yeah. they can't you know, they they've only got one goal uh really for for this race um but it, it would take a minute, a miracle, wouldn't it, for them to over, overcome uh, Alpine? Sorry, mate, you completely cut out then. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, so uh, uh, no, that, that, that was that was that was that was the audio on my side. Ah, okay. Uh, I, was, I was just saying that um, AlphaTauri obviously can't go backwards, uh, which is you know that that that, that brings opportunities, you know, um, yeah. uh, almost. Um, do you think they can? T- do you think they could actually take it to Alpine? They'll give it a good go. They're gonna need. They're gonna need Sonoda to um... bring his game back. Yes. Oh my! I'm. I'm sorry. I'm my watch off. It's just going absolutely <laughs> effing and blinding mad. Sorry. I. I, I used to do. Used to put my phone in D and D, but I'm waiting for news from someone who I know. So. Just. I, I guess that when we're done. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah. Alf. Alf Atari. They could take it to Alpine, but but like I was about to say before, I was rudely interrupted by my own watch. Um, they, uh, <laughs> yeah, they need to know to to at least get into Q three and then not have any silly incidents like he did in the race that we've just had. And I'm just going to refer to it as that because we've talked about that race more than enough. Um, it is advantage Alpine, and you would say Alpine has the stronger driver pairing out of the two because you know he's obviously a rookie. We know how good Gasly is. Ocon is decent; he's not bad at all. You know he is a race winner, and Alonso. Well, you know Alonso, don't we? Everybody knows Alonso. So you would say you'd put your money on Alpine, but if that Honda package works well around, um, works well around uh, Gas Marina, you know. You you know, and how many times has Gasly been like P six, P seven, P five this year, P four? It's like enough. yeah, en- it, enough for enough for us to be considering it and not just going now. Nah, they're never doing that exactly. But the pro- the problem is, Alpha Tower has basically got a limp. And hear me out on this, right? It's time for it's time for another analogy of Tom. 
So sit down, buckle in, ladies and gentlemen, because here we go. We're going on an event. Editor, get the graphics ready, please. <laughs> yeah, insert overlay here. Um, We're going to go on in the Chiron or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, when I say Alpha Tire got a limp, it's a bit like me when I first dislocated my knee and had a load of surgery. I had one really buff leg, that's Gasly. Then I had one which is sort of just like a bit pish, and that's Sonoda. And now Sonoda has been trained, he's been working hard, and he's getting there. But the team is still a bit Gasly heavy. And if Gasly was to leave, that team would just go clear because Gasly outdrives that car and he puts it in places where it shouldn't be. But the problem is that creates such a points difference between him and Sonoda. And Sonoda has been unlucky this season, and he is a rookie. I mean, I still maintain he should have had another year in F2, but by the by, it's not going to change anything. And it just means that there's this points gap between uh, there's this points gap between um, Gasly and Sonoda, which is just too big of a golf, I think. Even if Alpine have a mediocre race, say come home like I don't know P nine and P eleven, and Gasly comes home P six, I just don't think they're going to catch um, catch Alpine. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's 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 one of those things. That it's possible, and it, it's it's almost probable. It, sorry, it's, it's yeah, it, it can get into probable. But on the other hand, it's just like, but but it's an odor, and you know, you know, it's a new track that he's not. I don't think he's really driven it. No, you, no, he has. He would have done. He he'd driven it before. Yeah, but, I say, he'd have driven it in F two, but it's obviously different. Yeah, it's different. It's but it's not massive. Well, it's it's a bit. It's but it's not like you know. It's 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 not like. A completely new circuit. Yeah, they've not they've not completely redone the layout. You know, they're not we're not running yeah. it backwards or anything yeah. like that. So uh Do you remember when that was a that was an idea floated around for Silverstone last year. Oh goodness, yeah. Uh, I'm, that, yeah, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, it's, I think as Dan Titchum said in the F2 race on Sunday, though, you know, you don't realise how when you're driving the other way on an F1 circuit, how much stuff is uh, sticking out if, yep. and, uh, and, and it could be very dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now we've, we're kind of moving into the section where, um, like, it's it's just sort of a it's good, you know it's a good night out sort of section for these for these last few drivers uh, for these yeah. last few drivers and teams, um, and to to a certain degree it's they're, they're there because they they're contractually obligated to be there rather than you know for a couple of them rather than any um, uh, any any potential gains they might be. Um, is it a test session for Aston Martin, for example? <sighs> like <laughs> yeah um it's uh, it's it's a chance for them to just wind down for the season have a bit of a boogie and just look forward to look forward to the end of season test in 2022 because they they're not going to catch um who's ahead of Alpha Tari. they're not going to catch Alpha Tari. Yeah, and they can't catch Alpha Tari. they can't be caught by Williams Williams yeah so 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 they're just sort of there existing a bit like stroll just exists um, and it's just like, yeah, they, they'll 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 do they'll, they'll do their thing, um, and and yeah, they'll you know they, they might sneak a point here or there. Um, it'd be nice to see said get get a couple of points, but realistically, it, it's it's much like the other teams we're about to talk about, which probably won't take very long. It's just it's it's just going to be sort of like you said, they're doing it because they are. Legitimately, just contractually obliged to. So yeah, so so Aston, they're just gonna they're just gonna drive around because it's what they're paid to do. Go ooh, pretty lights. Um, try and avoid holding up team, you know, Max and Lewis coming steaming up behind them. And uh, and yeah, and and in, and then in, enjoy a Christmas break. Yeah, it's uh, it's like one of those Thursdays you have where uh, Thursdays. Well, sorry, yeah, it's like the you know, yeah, sorry, I completely bungled my analogy there. What I was <laughs> going to say it's like one of those Fridays you have in the last week before Christmas where no one's really doing anything, no one's really doing any work. Um, you know, there's nothing to be gained by uh, by you know, really pushing very hard, and and uh, and uh, they can um, they can sort of rest easy almost. Um, it's, it's probably quite a nice position to be in for Aston Martin. It, it would have been a nicer position, I think, for them a few a few places up in the uh, constructors based on the investment and, and how it's been going. But um... uh, Yeah, and 
some people have been drawing comparisons to the racing point of 2020 the, and, and saying, how can the team go backwards? The problem is we had these regulation changes just a slight bit this year, which obviously cut the cut the rear floor and favoured cars, which have a high rake, um, high rake design. It, it was aimed to make it a bit more competitive, and it's done exactly that. The difference is Mercedes have got the resources to re, redesign the car, you know, do all the rest of it. And William said from the outset, we're just go, you know, they said they went for, they went for a more peaky downforce setup, which is why they've had some somewhat shock results. And that's why Aston haven't done sort of as well as people would have liked this year, because it is a development year for them. And also we've got new regulations coming in next year. So if there are any Aston Martin fans out there, I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah, it's not been a great year, but it's it's the first step in a very, very big programme of what Aston are doing. Yeah, so that's probably the most I've ever said about Aston Martin on this podcast. But yeah, they've been quite anonymous uh, through the entire race. So I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, sorry, not the race uh, through the entire season. season. Sorry. Yeah, I'm having a, having a few internet issues, which is why uh, <laughs> I might uh, I might miss you when you finish uh, miss when you finish talking. Unfortunately, no, it's all good. Yeah, we're, we're just uh, clipping in and out on on my end. Um, but after that, we have Williams. Uh, it's you know the T is obviously I believe there next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, George Russell, obviously, he is oh. now probably within about 800, 1,000 kilometres maybe of uh, of being, being a Mercedes, Mercedes driver. C- yeah, um, this is, you know, ever, ever the professional, and we always sing his praises, but um, that they have one job really, which is not to get overtaken. Like, hopefully, yeah, if, 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 if anything crazy uh, does happen, it's not to get overtaken uh Overtaken by Alpha uh, Alpha Romeo, sorry, it wouldn't matter too much with the investment they've got. But um, you know, it, 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 it's it's got to be a better than last week, uh, basically, isn't it? Uh, not through the, through their own fault, but you know. Yeah, well, I mean, for for Williams and uh, I might as well roll Haas into this as well. Um, actually, no, because we've got Alpha Romeo to talk about. Apparently, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Williams couldn't have really gone that much worse to them last weekend. Um, you know, just drivers both in unfortunate positions wasn't their fault. Um, but then coming into this weekend, Latifi, he's just you know he's he's finished. This is his second season in F one, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Um, and and he's he does feel like he is bedding into the team now. Yes, we know he comes with a lot of sponsorship and all the rest of it, but I do feel like he's becoming a more solid, dependable driver. Um. And the problem is, when you're up against George Russell, who has won karting, who has won F3, who I don't think he won. I think he came third in GP3, but he then won F2 and has come into this, come into motorsport or come into F1, touted to go to Mercedes, which is exactly what he's doing uh, in you know, roughly seven days' time. Um, the see if he's done all right, I think. And he... He comes across as a nice guy, and and I think I think when you compare him to someone like Mazepin, who's obviously there because of uh, your money, and Sol, who's also there because of money, um, I think the TV sometimes goes under the radar a bit, and fair enough. Um, but both both winning drivers, they're just going to do their bit. Um, I do think George will have a bit of subconscious of like if if he sees Lewis coming again. I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just speculating. But I wouldn't be surprised if if Hamilton is in front of... Uh, sorry, if Verstappen is in front of Hamilton and they're both coming up to lap the Williams, George just happens to hold that Verstappen a bit and then just allows Lewis to catch up. And on the flip side, if, if Hamilton is leading Verstappen, George just holds up Verstappen a bit, lets Lewis just get a little bit ahead of him you know, maybe break, you know, maybe sort of like stops what's happened getting DRS. I'm not saying he would intentionally do well, I am actually, um, you know, big suit ever. ever. Um, but you know, he, he's, he's definitely going to be playing the Mercedes part, I think. Yeah. Um, George Russell is a contracted Mercedes driver at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, has been for a while, has been on that payroll for quite a while. Uh, yes. and if you, you know, you you want uh, you want to make yourself like uh, you may, you want to make your life as easy as possible. I imagine if you're going into a uh, into a Lewis Hamilton into Lewis Hamilton's team, essentially, you know one that's been molded around him for uh, a quite a long time. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 I with 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 um, Russell going to Mercedes, it feels like there's a bit of a passing of the guard, especially if Hamilton gets his eighth world title this year. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, you, you get the feeling that almost. I don't know. I, I don't know. Lewis Hamilton said that he wasn't really t- talking about titles when he got to five. Um, you know, he didn't really care about how many he got or anything like that. And here we are at seven on the cusp of eight. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and that may change. You know, eight could be easily be nine. Nine could easily be ten. Um, he doesn't lose, yeah. like, look like he's losing anything, but I, I think you're definitely yeah. right. It, you know, we're seeing almost uh, the 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 21st century's answer to, you know, 21st century born answer to, to Lewis Hamilton is, uh, is George Russell. I think I've got the ages slightly wrong there. Um, uh, but, you know, we've got, instead of talking about the 21st century, we, uh, we're going to have to go back to the, uh, to the 20th when you've got uh, Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo uh, with Giovinazzi. Um, both are leaving at the end of next year, um, you know, in, uh, in favour of younger and, uh, and and you know younger drivers, different drivers. Um, there, there's a, a, the outside chance, and it is an outside chance. You know, we, we've talked about the 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 way that Mercedes, uh, Williams can't really go backwards. Uh, you know, assuming standard results, standard rules applying. Um, Alfa Romeo can't really either. Um, can't really go forwards, and they're, they're not going to be overtaken by Haas. Let's be real. Um, uh, it's. It's kind of, it's kind of a bittersweet end to a uh, to a couple of careers. Um, you know, one that maybe never hit its full potential in uh, in Kimi Raikkonen. Um, although I'm sure he's had all of the everything that he wants out of it, and um, and Giovinazzi's, which unfortunately never really got going, much like an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Kimi is like. You can't believe he's been in F1 for as long as he has. He's only won, only, only won a single world title. That's a better way of putting that. If you look at his McLaren years, if it wasn't for reliability, I think I think it was 03. He should have won. Yeah, it was either that or 05, which yeah, you know, was again oh, a yeah. very very fast McLaren. But uh, yeah. Um, is it, you know, and, and then, you know, obviously the famous story of how he almost bankrupt Lotus because he got a podium and they paid him sort of like a million quid per point. And he practically drained all their resources. Apparently, well, apparently he, he's, he's still owed as well. He's still owed six million pounds, but uh, six million dollars, apparently. Yeah. Uh, it was something I'm, like $55,000 per point. Yeah. It was, yeah. But, and uh, and it was something like hundred and something points. So, uh, but <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, but good good guy Kimmy um, decided not to uh, take the points. It's not it's not worth pushing it. It's a uh, very straw that broke the camel's back, and yeah. a load of people lose their jobs. <laughs> oh god, yeah. But um, I still maintain Kimmy should have retired a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, he um, should have left Ferrari on a high. He'd he'd won the US Grand Prix, and he should have just powered. I get why he went back to Sauber, but. And and people love his demeanor of oh it's it's a it's a hobby you know or whatever and yeah that's funny but it got to the point now where he's almost been arguably blocking some people who should have been coming through because if he wasn't there we'd have probably seen Schumacher at um, at Alfa Romeo there's a good chance we'd have probably seen Callum Eilat in F1 yeah um, yeah I don't want to say that Kimmy's outside is welcome because I'd happily watch him drive around you know all day. Um, but there is, yeah, there has been that feeling of you need to move on, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we've uh, and we've watched a fall, whereas you know maybe a Mark Webber or something like that year where we didn't have to see that. Um, well, with Hamilton, we're not seeing that. Hamilton's getting better. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Hamilton's quite old now by F1 yeah. standards. Um, yeah, and Geo, um, is it kind of you wish him all the best? I feel like Geo, yeah. Um, you know, Italian Jesus. Um, yeah, he's uh, showed some real, like, glimpses of brilliance, but just far too inconsistent and had, had some, you know, crashed the same corner two years in a row in Spa. Mm. Um, just by the time we started to get it together this year, it was too little, too late. And when 
uh, when Guan Yu Zhou started waving the money at Sauber once the deal with Andretti was off the table, the right was on the wall. Mm. Yeah. So Gio, I, Gio, I think, will do well in Formula E. He has had some good results this year in that car that's not very good. He had a brilliant qualifying in the in the Netherlands. You know, he got his Q3 in Jeddah. You know, he's had a couple of Q3 and Q2 appearances. Got a point in Monaco. Or maybe even two points. Yeah, but it's just, it's too little too late. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to talk about Jira in, a, in, a, in a, a, a bit more of a sort of introspective way, I guess, almost. Uh, not introspective, that's the wrong word. Um, but just sort of an anal- analytical way. And the, I think, I think we forget that for all the Lewis Hamiltons and um, Max Verstappens and Charles Leclerc of the world, the ones that come in with huge promise and are very quick, and even Romain Grosjean, who's, again, very, very quick, um, maybe not uh, as consistent or, or as, uh, as good a racer uh, as, well as he could have been. Um, that unfortunately, you're going to have people like, you know, Biano Trulli, who occasionally get some good results or, or David Coulthard who occasionally get some good results and, and David Coulthard's a, I, I don't mean that to besmirch him in any way you know guys are Grand Prix winner and I, I, I talk about uh, Grand Prix winners on uh, on a podcast there's a, there's a huge difference between those two but um, you know there's there are some you know they, they, we can't, they can't all be world champions and they can't all be race winners and they can't all be pole sitters and the problem is in F1 being okay on an occasional day isn't good enough. No. F1 is the pinnacle of motorsport, and you are under the biggest spotlight in racing, in motor racing. Um, and that same spotlight that you know managed to wilt, uh, you know, a very, very quick bow through Bottas. Let's make no bones about that, yeah. For example, but you can yeah. be made to look mediocre by, yeah, with Bob Spotlight. When Garcia went to Red Bull, we know how well he's bounced back, Albon. Danny Rick. No. How many of those drivers would drive the pants off any any number of drivers in any other series of motorsport? Exactly. And just sadly, the odd good result is not good enough. Yeah. And that's why Gio, he's had three years. It's been entertaining watching Fred was chasing around with the pair of scissors. That was that was funny. Trying to cut his hair off after, after he got a point in, I think it was Austria. Last year or the year before, I can't remember what year it was. Mm. I, think, I think it was the year before. I don't know, but yeah, but it was just no, definitely one last year. Um, but yeah, just yeah, it's uh, his time has come and gone. I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah. Um, Should talk about house. Yeah. Do for right. I'm going to start this with a different question. Um, do you think house have enough bits? Nope. <laughs> I think they've. I think they're going to be racing in a Lego F1 car if, if they have an accident in FP3 or something. Um, I genuinely don't know how many parts they've got available, and we were talking about this before we went live. It's not many. There's definitely not a. Re- there's there, there's definitely a few fewer rear wings. Yeah, um, and it wasn't Mazepin back on his old chassis as well, the one which is. Yeah, it's been patched up and. It'll probably That's be a new one for next year. Yeah. Um, do, do, do you reckon if the, if if you has, you just chuck two new engines in it, brand well, new engines? Why not? Yeah, I mean, like, like I, I mean, it is, it, you know, they will just, you know, even if they outqualified maybe Latifi, you know, it's it's not going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. If I was them, I would just, I just. Say, I just put a whole new power unit gearbox that works and say, right, go on, crack on, yeah. see what you can do. Yeah, you're, yeah, just you're both, both of them. Just give them, give them two new Ferrari power units and turn them up to well, whatever, whatever, whatever you're allowed would, to. Yeah, whatever, whatever will take you uh, through the amount of laps that you think you can do. Yeah, and just please don't put each other in the pit wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is uh, it's one for the sponsors, basically. You know, put actually, actually that might be why. <laughs> Get your sponsors on TV. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, because we need the money in to fix the wings you keep breaking. Yeah, it's a shame that that's become a dip. Ha- that, that this is what's happened to the house experiment. Where what? So oh, I want to say six year, five years in, six years in. Twenty sixteen they debuted. Yeah, Certainly. we're five yeah. years in, and yeah. we've gone from very promising 
to um like you know back of the grid like yeah back of the grid almost the laughing stock yeah it started with rich energy didn't it yeah that didn't help i think there was probably money promised and wasn't yeah and then it's just it's just spiraled from there um i think there needs to be a systematic restructure of Haas because I think I think it is rotten to the core. Yeah, the it's it's a shame though um, that we've gone five years. You know, it it feels like Matt Mosley's new teams experiment. To be honest, well, from, um, what from twenty ten? Twenty ten. Yeah, we've had five years, and that's it. Uh, you know, you know, five years of came, right, here's a new way of sorry. doing a Formula One team, or and then and then just fading into oblivion. Just, uh, just inevitably enough, as the uh, as new regulations that might help them come in. Well, they did say from the outset they were not going to be developing the car this year at all, and they put all their resources into next year. So it has to work for Haas next year. It has to work for them. And hey, um, if it doesn't, that could be curtains. I really don't want to see a team disappear. But think about it: if you're Gene Haas, if you're you know Mazepin seen it less so but the sponsors do you really want to be piling money in week in week out to just be to, to think we might get p15 if there are four retirements yeah i mean it's i'm not saying i'm expecting them to go out there and go oh we're going to be saying you're going to be red bull we're going to be blah 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 but they need, need to be but they need to be fighting with more than just themselves yeah and even then, they can't really do that, apparently. Well, yeah, because they'll just scrap like nobody's business. Yeah. Um, it's... I don't, it's it's gotten to the point with Hass, I think, where we don't even want to laugh at them anymore. It's like... Uh, it, it's, it's beyond that, right? Hass have been... Yeah, they've had, a, they've had a woeful year. But we knew that from the outset. And there have been some, obviously... Off track antics last year, which it's been a year. I'm not going to mention, but people will know what what we mean or what I mean because I'm not really saying it. Um, there have been some questionable on track antics. You know, Mazepin getting very wavy. You know, Baku swings to mind. Um, he did it in Zandvoort. I'm sure he did it somewhere else as well. It's been a real trial by fire, I would say. Yeah, and so what you will about either of the drivers, it. And you say, oh, you know, they've been they've been garbage or the rest of it, and people who say, you know, oh, Robert Kubica is ahead of Mazepin. Kubica is a damn good driver, even with his injury, and and in a, in a car that has been capable of getting points. Ish um, at times, come on, like you know, the, the Haas is so slow that even with a crazy race, you don't think they can. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. So sorry, so yeah, for some reason, I had in my head that. I had in my head that Kibitz was at Haas, but it was at Alfa Romeo. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry, yeah. Um, so, and these are both rookies. And Kibitz, uh, before his accident, he was a race winner. He was touted as a world champion. And even when he came back with Williams, he wasn't horrendous. Hmm. So, and he's a man with a lot more experience than those two rookies. So, the Haas drivers haven't had the platform to really showcase their talents. The only time I can think that there has been was in the Hungarian Grand Prix when Schumacher was about P9 at one point. Hmm. He was actually battling wheel to wheel with drivers. And I remember watching and thinking, it's nice to see that because that kid can drive. Hmm. It's, it's been it's, like a year-long test session, really, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, and luckily, they've had the ability to do their year-long test session with people to pass you know learning how to do how learning how to get lapped and learning how to how to how to follow cars in dirty air and you don't get that a lot with uh you know even with these th- in, in a lot of places in motorsport like where they no. do the 30 hour tests and things like that no so it's just yeah i, I mean i've, I've said on all i'm gonna say about house um it needs to work next year if it doesn't could be sayonara yeah um, I think that brings us to you know that rounds us out quite nicely. Um, we have predictions now, and that's no fun. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction because I wouldn't ask. I don't want to ask me to make a prediction because. Oh, um, and what's your prediction for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix? Bro? Well, I thought I think Lewis Hamilton will win. Do you know why? Because I'm an ha- I'm a Hamilton fan. Yeah, uh, and I think Verstappen is going to take him out, and I'm a Verstappen fan. Yay! There we go. Are we there? We like. There we does it matter? Do we like? Do, right. Okay. We're, we're we're at the last race of the season. Don't you. I don't have anything. Exactly. It's, it's the, just the, like, this I, this pla- this plastic bag. It's from the COVID testing kits. This plastic bag <laughs> is how much <laughs> is that? Is how much it, is how much you've been able to put between these two drivers all season, and yeah. it's and it's come to. Yeah, that's, that's there. There we much. go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, that's how much you can put between them. I, I don't think it's fair to ask to predict at this point. No. What I will predict is the um, is the podium. Um, because you know we're doing, you know, the, that's going to give us the answer regardless. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, no, I've messed up here. Uh, oh god. Um, oh. Mm. No, just just leave it because there's nothing. There's nothing to be said. Okay, um, who's going to win the constructors? Are Red Bull and Mercedes? That's the only one I can really think of because third place is sorted, and all you know, the others we talked about. Yeah, everything else is basically locked in. Um, I, I think Mercedes. I, th- I think Mercedes. <laughs> they got too much of an advantage. You got too much of an advantage, and even if there's silliness with, you know, the scenario that you mentioned uh, before we went live, which is, you know, that there, there could be a, a sec- uh, sorry, a ninth place for Hamilton and a and a, uh, a tenth place for Verstappen with the fastest lap point, you know. Yeah, and like I don't, I need a- don't want to think about it. Yeah, it's, it's um, it, it makes you feel ill, man. Honestly. <sighs> Honestly, I, I will be sitting there. The permutation, the permutations, yeah. right? The permutations are: Max outscores Lewis, Lewis loses. Lewis outscore, uh, Lewis outscores uh, Max. Uh, Max win. Uh, uh, sorry, what did I say? Lewis loses. Uh, Max loses. Uh, and if and if they come on the tie, Max wins. Yeah, that's it. Those are like. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm tense now. I'm as tense uh, as I was before before Saudi Arabia. I know. I, I'm stressed enough as it is, and this is. I can't wait for this to be over. Whether Max wins or loses, or Lewis wins or loses, be nice. Be nice just to sit down on a Sunday I, evening and I not know, just be sit, te- just, Yeah, just sit down and not just be sort of sitting there rocking back and forth, thinking, "Oh, <laughs> they're gonna crash or whatever." <sighs> yeah, I know. It's uh, honestly, it's stressing me out. Championship. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I'm gonna go. Norris wins. <laughs> yeah, Norris yeah. gets his win. Oh, I, 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 I would cry if Norris wins. I will start crying. <laughs> Be so nice. Uh, anyway, right. Um, of it's a bit of a mess now uh, at this point um uh live but uh if you're listening after the fact uh we now stream the show live on youtube and facebook uh so be sure to like our Facebook formula one grid talk and uh and make sure you ring the bell icon to make sure that you get notified of shoot, uh, future shows um we're now available on verbal Available on Amazon Music, YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Omni Studio, and Pocket Cast. Just search F1 Grid Talk. Uh, we've got a large back catalogue of shows. That's over 155 episodes now, including interviews. Um, that's interviews plural, because we've got two. Uh, um, as well as retrospective pieces on Tiregate and Senna. Um, what to do? Maybe you could, uh, if you were, you could go so- through some of our uh, reactions to those races. But you've not got long, uh, I would say. Uh, I don't think you can do it <laughs> if you were. Uh, maybe if you were go sleep. Um, but if you don't want to do that, uh, Tom Downey, where can we find you? So I'm part of everything I've won. You can find us across uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we are at Join EF1. We also have our website, which is everythingf1.com. Currently undergoing a facelift as well, so it'll be a nice new shiny site very soon. Um, also, we have our Everything F1 podcast. We have some great guests on. We had Tom Gaynor on last week. Um, we've had people like Lawrence Barreto on. Um, Ed Straw is a sort of 
uh, well, semi regular come friend of the show. Um, and and we also have a YouTube channel where we do track uh, track guys previews all that kind of thing. And we upload snippets from our podcast all the rest of it. And we have a Discord server as well, which you can find on our website. Awesome. Very nice. Um, if you want to hear me ramble, but in text form, uh, in a bit more of a, uh, it's probably 22nd century at this point, you know, it'd be in the history book somewhere. Uh, it's a, it's a meme look. Uh, I haven't, I haven't currently waded in uh, onto the, uh, onto the various internet sources because it's a, uh, it's a bit toxic out there right now. Um, but I, but if you'd like to uh, just get our, get my view on uh, everything that's uh, and everything a little lighter uh go to sportlightpro.com and look for the uh for the main reviews because that's where i uh that's my jam uh but so again that's uh, sportlightpro.com um just lastly uh if you are stuck for what to do between shows uh, in, uh, in respect of uh sorry despite all those uh, much better options um, then check out our subreddit f1 grid talk and you can give us some suggestions for what we can do to improve the show and perhaps subscribe to our patreon for mics lights and better recording equipment for our presenters uh, it still might not help the fact that we ramble quite a lot or at least i do um, we will be back on saturday to give our analysis and reaction to the probably inevitably uh, inconsequential qualifying such is the nature of this year uh, for the abu dhabi grand prix um, thank you very much for watching uh, and goodbye Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, we'll just stick around for a few minutes on the uh, on the post show on the in the live yeah. stream. Um, so that's George saying it's been a fantastic, battle, fascinating battle we have in store. You can't even call races after qualifying. That's honestly where I got that idea from. Um, and we just want the race to be decided fairly. But after the moves that the both teams were pulling on Sunday, yeah, not great. Um, especially Matt's is going. Well, I think it's six or one half a dozen of the other, to be honest. Um, uh, even up to that last race, what more can fans ask for? Certainly after last year, uh, predictions, only two of you from Michael Gonzalez. Don't predict anything except. Yeah, just get your popcorn and beer ready. That sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick your beverage of choice and your snack of choice and settle in because it's going to. Uh... It's going to get spicy. Yeah, you might need uh, you might need some uh, electrolyte electrolyte drink or something after that because I know that I was shaking after Saudi and uh, I, 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 I I legit had to go for a walk after a quick walk after the race before the podcast yesterday. I, I was so happy I wasn't on it. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, and uh, I, I mean, you know, like I said, I don't think I'm going to be on any of the podcasts this weekend because I'm moving house. So. The last thing I want to do is, uh, you know, to be you know, be unpacking boxes and trying to talk about Max either winning or Hamilton winning a championship. So I might not be emotionally stable enough. Yeah, this is one of those ones. It's uh, it feels like, it feels very two thousand eight almost, but with even more oh. up to the wire. I I can't think of any time where I think it's been this tense. No, like not. I like. Um, no, but between two teams, at least inter team, I think is different. Uh, obviously, Verstappen and Rosberg. Uh, sorry, Max. Uh, oh, sorry, Hamilton and Rosberg. Obviously, but they're into t- that's inter team. They. The last time we had two drivers really going into the final round from two different teams, I say Brazil twenty twelve. But it, Along... I don't think that was the kind of animosity that seems to be festering. Nah, there's so much more at, at play here. I don't think actually. I don't think actually Vettel or Alonso had ever t- like they hadn't. They they just, hadn't had. They haven't had the incidents that Hamilton and Verstappen have had this year. No, they were almost like they, they, because of the way the Ferrari was that season. They were just on two different sections of track the entire time. Yeah. Um, the only the only t- thing you can say would be like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, maybe. Yeah, sorry, I've just seen a really funny meme. Yeah, um... uh, I know it's just it's it's going to be a whichever way it goes, it's they're going to be fireworks. You know, it's nice. It's nice that we can just put down this season. I don't even know to know what happens. It's been a classic the entire time. It's just we just get to put it up there on the shelf and just go. If you want to know what formula, what well, for the most part, apart from you know. I think it was a mess on all sides at Saudi. 
Um, yeah. And I think yeah. that sort of. Um, I'm the, not. The, I'm not going back into that. It's been done to death. I, I don't even want. I, no, I, I didn't mean like that. I just mean like. I, know, I think. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I think it's smacked of um, money. Well, I, I think maybe the uh, maybe the sort of mess of the regime crept in. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got Michael Gonzalez saying, you know, uh, turn, off, turn off the uh, F1, get it out of your system for a week. And I'm oh, like, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love a 16 race calendar, unfortunately, uh, as, as somebody who has to cover this in any way. Um, don't know how the teams do it. Don't know how the professional media do it. <laughs> no, I guess that's about it. City, they talking about it. The teams that travel to every race and the media that travel to every race. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was having a conversation with uh, with a friend of mine, and uh, she was saying she was saying, well, you know, do, do, which do you prefer? And I was just like, uh, me too. Twenty three races as a me as a, as someone who talks about it in any capacity. Sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, oh. I'm just I'm just getting nervous thinking about the end of the season. Yeah, it's because you you just know that. That there's always that risk from yeah. Bot- Bottas could be given money to do things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, I think that would be going into conspiracy territory, actually. So I don't yeah, know. you're. Uh... I think I'll. I'll think I'll step back from the edge on that one. Not so. <laughs> not so. Yeah, but it's just like a... uh, maybe in the old days of F1, but hopefully not now. Not now. Think. No, no, no. We can't. We can't get. We can't give Netflix any more to play with. <laughs> they'll fuck it up regardless. Oh yeah, no. They talk about. Um, they'll make up a rivalry between Carlos and Lando. No, no, no. This year it'll be between Ocon and Alonso. Oh yes, that's that who. That's who they'll make it up between. How much year. do I want to hear about that? <laughs> yeah, and they will bring Hungary twenty. They'll bring the Hungarian race into it. And they'll start taking clips from Alonso in 2005 and make him to be like out of contention. You know, I'll, t- I'll tell you what they'll take. They'll take clips from the preseason test in 20. Uh, sorry, the postseason test in 2020, where uh, where Alonso got a uh, got obviously got to do the test because he'd been out of F1. And then they'll cut in completely unrelated angles of Ocon looking annoyed <laughs> as a car leaves the garage. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. I've, I could fully oh, see that happening. Mate, oh, I, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well that made a rivalry between Carlos and Lando. Piss off, Netflix. Yeah. Oh, 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 what are the chances it's a DNF for both Max and Lewis? I don't even want to speculate on that. That uh, makes me sick. <laughs> just it's, a good, about it's, a, it. it's a valid question you asked, Jared Bradley. There, but like, oh, fucking hell, yeah. But oh. <laughs> I ref- I refuse to I refuse to get even into that kind of chat at this point. Uh, yeah, I know. I just <laughs> the season. I I got enough stress as it is. This season's stressing me out, man. I thought sport, I thought sport was meant to be a uh, stress reliever. I oh, don't know. No, it's not. It's just that's what oh. my doctor says. Oh, yeah. oh right, right. Uh, I think we'll call that there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much if you're still watching. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for watching us. Uh, just not know what to help, what what to even say uh, for the last for the last hour and a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. But uh, we'll we'll call it there. So uh, thank you and uh, goodbye. <laughs>